One of the great things about AI art is that it breaks down barriers to creativity. There's a ton of great tools popping up to empower creators like me, including Comic AI, a new service that helps users transform their stories into a legit comic. I'll take Comic AI for a spin to show you how it works by creating a scene from one of my original Everly Heights scripts, Zoo of Zero Tolerance, today on Building Dreams. Hey, it's Bill Meeks here for Building Dreams, where I help you use the latest AI technology to build dreams of your own, just like I'm using them to build the first cartoon set in my Everly Heights universe, a sitcom called Very Special. Today, my focus won't be on Very Special. Instead, I'll be using Comic AI, the sponsor of today's video, to recreate a scene from Zoo of Zero Tolerance. It's a short scene where the main characters have a phone conversation about the results of a contest. Along the way, I'll test out Comic AI's custom character tool, various styles, and give you an honest assessment of Comic AI at the end of the video. Okay, let's get started with a quick overview of the tool. And if you want to give me a little credit, sign up for Comic Eye at comiceye.everlyheights.tv so they know I sent you their way. We'll start with the character library. Before you start telling your story, you'll need to create characters, right? Well, Comic AI gives you two options, training mode and generation mode. Training mode, like a lot of popular AI applications like Lenza, lets you upload 10 to 30 images of an original character to add them to the system. They want you to upload 10 to 30 sample images in their tool here on a plain white background or at least a one color background. But in the end, I found that putting a plain background on the back didn't really affect the generation quality very much. As for that character generation quality, for me, it was a bit uneven. Now the issue was, uh, and you'll see this when we get into creating your comic in just a minute, we have various styles to pick from uh, in the comic book generation. Uh, you know, anime styles, black and white anime styles, stuff like that. The characters I trained in training mode work great with some models and not so great with other ones. Given that, I've decided to abandon my Everly Heights house style uh, for the characters, and I'm going to use generation mode to create Tina Infantino, Ken Sacco, and Ken's mom, whose name I can't remember right now. Now, generation mode lets you prompt a character with a name and a description, which works like any online AI art generator you've used, like Midjourney or Dolly 2 or whatever. To see how this works, take a look at me creating the character model for Tina Infantino, one of the characters uh, from Zoo of Zero Tolerance. I put in her name, Tina Infantino, then put in a rough description of what I wanted, which is basically a 14-year-old girl in the 1990s with rainbow-colored hair. Now, I did have to tweak the prompt a few times here, but eventually I settled on something that, at least to me, looks kind of like my interpretation of my character, Tina Infantino. I did have to step through a few different prompts until I found one that I liked, but luckily they only cost three mana or so, which is the currency you use on Comic AI. You can also wait to generate your character until you're in the comic book making side of Comic AI, and it'll cue more to the style of the comic book you selected. Like you'll see here, I selected a superhero comic book style, and it generated Tina Infantino, but it made her very, very uh, superhero-y. Even gave her a Superman shield on her chest. But that's a great way to uh, make a character in the style of the comic book you're going to be making eventually anyway. Otherwise, you can use the tool from the main screen and just make a generic character that can adapt to the style you choose to use. Okay, I'm going to make my other characters for this comic book, and uh, then we'll get started. Yeah, you can speed through this, though. You'll see here I'm putting unattractive and chubby. Since this is trained on anime characters, you kind of have to do that kind of indicating to get a realistic body type. Okay, uh, now that I have all my characters, let's make a comic. Okay, to get started here, we're going to type a name for our comic. My comic is called Zoo of Zero Tolerance. Creator is me, Bill Meeks. Nice to meet you. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and choose a style here for the comic. I'm going to go with monochrome, which has sort of that uh, very classic manga feel to the comic. And then we click next. And then the AI wants us to put in a story. 
Now, since I already have my script here that I wrote as a TV pilot, I'm just going to paste in the script of the scene. I don't know if it's going to really understand what I'm doing here, but we'll put the script for the scene in and see what it does for us. So go ahead and click Next. And the AI will sort of process this and try and break it up into panels and pages for you. And then it's actually generated uh, some sample characters for us. I don't like them, though, so we're going to go ahead and go with the characters we created here, Kamiko, Ken, and Tina Infantino. So we'll go ahead and select these guys, confirm add. So go ahead and click next. And then you'll see here, this is the main uh, panel builder display here. And it created a ton of panels for us over here based on our script. And then in each of the image descriptions, it puts in a quote from our script. Unfortunately, Ken worried on the phone into your Ken's house, Ken's bedroom night is probably not going to do a whole lot. So we're going to go ahead and get a little more descriptive here. And I'll put something like uh, Ken hides under the covers in his 1990s bedroom talking on an old 1990s analog phone. OK, let's go ahead and make sure we have the right Ken Sacco, because remember, it generated one for me, too. And then for the price of three mana, we'll go ahead and click Regenerate. Now, again, the generations are pretty low in terms of how much mana you have to spend. And I think they do that because they realize that, you know, with this kind of stuff, it's better to, you know, make a bunch of options and then eventually pick one that you like. Like you'll see here, this one, it's pretty OK, except his arm is growing into his face, which I really don't like. So we'll just go ahead and reroll. And this is exactly what I would do in Stable Diffusion, too. I would just like generate four at a time and then re-roll if I don't like one. This one's not bad. He kind of looks like he's on the phone. Um, you know what? I'm going to do one more. And the nice thing is, is if we don't find a better one, we can always click History here and go back to one of the other ones that we already got. But let's see here. That one's not bad either. I'm going to re-roll again. And you know what? I'm just going to re-roll and make like 10 or 12 of these, and then I'll pick the best one. So we'll speed through that. And there we go. That's the perfect one. So this will be for Ken's line of dialogue here. And then we'll move on to panel two for Tina's first line of dialogue. To change it up a little bit, though, I'm going to show you how the image variation mode works. So luckily, I already pulled down a couple of characters talking on the phone uh, from the 90s. So we'll go ahead and put in this picture of a random 90s girl chatting on the phone in a chair. And then you can also adjust the weighting of this. We'll go ahead and start with L for low and see what it generates for us. Now you see, it didn't change the image very much when it was on low. Like It basically just sort of added her face and made it a little bit more blurry and an anime-y. So let's go ahead and take it up to medium and see what that does for us a little bit more anime. Uh, you know, her legs don't look like they're uh, photographs anymore, which is good. Uh, so let's go ahead and take this all the way up and see what happens if we change it completely. There we go. That looks very talking on the phone-ish. <laughs> so there we go. OK, so now we're eventually going to be um, going back and forth between these characters, right? But we want to kind of change up their face a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this first image of Ken out as a reference. And then we'll take the prompt from panel one, bring it into panel three, because he does get angry in this scene at one point. So is angry as he talks on the phone on a 1990s phone. extreme emotion because he's super angry about something Tina said. We'll do this as a clo extreme close-up. And then we'll use that image from the first panel as a reference for it. Okay, there still isn't a phone in his hand here, but it's close enough for jazz depending on how I... Uh, how I, how I frame it. So we're going to go ahead and go with that one. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go through and finish making my panels here. My intention is to make it into like a six panel grid where it's like, Ken says something, Tina says something. Ken says something, Tina says something. Ken says something, Tina says something. Flip the page, big blow up, new scene, stuff like that. So I have kind of an idea in my head, but first I have to make all the panels. So bear with me while I get that done. I will speed through it for your convenience. Okay, so we have 16 panels. It's time for text and layout. Go ahead and click uh, next and you'll go onto the text and layout screen here. Now you'll see here over on the right, we have all of our panels. Now we need to get a page set up. So we'll go ahead over here to templates and we'll try and find a good template. I think I'm gonna go with this four by four grid for uh, at least the first couple pages. So we'll go ahead and click that. It go goes ahead and populates here. Now we can go in and drag our panels in. So we'll go ahead and drag this one here, this one here. And if we want to, we can go ahead and double click on this and we can go ahead and make it bigger or smaller in the frame. So we can go ahead and get Tina to be roughly the same size as Ken is over there. And then another shot of Ken. We'll go ahead and zoom in a little tighter on him so we don't see that he doesn't have the same outfit on quite. Okay, so there's our first four panels. Now we need to add some text to it, right? So we'll go ahead over here to, uh, we'll go ahead and add a speech bubble here. Uh, we're gonna be doing with Ken first. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it uh, horizontally, then vertically. So we can bring it down here and we'll go ahead and input it here. We can go ahead, I think, and make this font size a little smaller too. Maybe not quite that small but something like that. And then over here like this, my mom hung up on the convenience market guy. Good. Okay, now we'll go ahead and speed through me adding this because it'll be the same process just a bajillion times. Uh, so give me a second here. And there, I'm done. I have a six page comic book, uh, which is pretty cool. I'll go ahead and flip through it here real quick for you. And now that I have the comic, all I have to do is save it. Now, if I click download in the upper right, I'll get a clean copy at a decent resolution that I can post anywhere I want as I please. Although if you want to print this or do any large format kind of stuff, you're probably going to want to run it through an upscaler of some type because it does get a little grainy when you zoom in. But there, uh, from zero to comic in about uh, 25, 30 minutes, it took me to do everything. So not too bad. Now I have some context to give you an honest review of Comic AI. Uh, now as for the good, it's easy to get a concept going. Uh, this tool would be great for traditional artists and filmmakers to quickly develop their storyboards. Additionally, the tools to edit the comic, including panel layout, text balloons, and special graphics, all work pretty good. Uh, with a few exceptions, sometimes I had to click out and click back into a speech bubble to get it to actually register that I was typing, but not too bad. Uh, confining all the settings in a settings box right by your speech bubble would probably help a lot in terms of making it more intuitive for the user. Now, as for the bad, um, training my custom characters didn't work great especially with the specific styles that I had in mind. Now, the characters I generated within Comic AI itself worked a lot better for the most part. Occasionally, I'd have to drag in one of my original poses as a reference image, but nine times out of 10, it came out looking exactly like the character I designed. It would also be nice if the upscale of our final uh, comic book art was provided or it gave us a print-ready PDF, but that's minor things. That's something I can do using my own tools uh, here at home. I will note that I heard from Comic Eye, which I mispronounced through most of this video, and they told me they'll be enhancing the file download options in the near future. This should make it easier for any artist wanting to take their artwork into Photoshop or Illustrator to clean it up. Like I always say, AI isn't the end of the creative process. So as for my final verdict on Comic AI, 
I'm not going to lie, as somebody who was doing a lot of advanced work with stable diffusion, the results were a little uneven, which means you end up having to generate a bunch of images to find one that works for your story. That can be said for other AI image generators, but you are paying a small credit for every generation with this one. But if you have an idea and you want to get it into comic form quickly, this tool will sure help you do that. As with any creative tool, you'll have to put work in, but the results can definitely be worth it. And if you want to give me a little credit, sign up for Comic Eye at comiceye.everlyheights.tv. And thanks again to Comic AI for so sponsoring they know I sent this you video. Their way. That's how you can use Comic AI to transform your idea into a legit comic with a little bit of mostly fun and creative work in the browser. And that does it for this episode. See you next time and keep dreaming. Read the stories and join the team at everlyheights.tv. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Everly Heights. Watch us build Everly Heights in building dreams by subscribing to at Bill Meeks LA on YouTube. Get access to the custom stable diffusion models we're using to build Everly Heights, as well as our morning meeting production diary by supporting us at patreon.com slash Everly Heights.